and we're ready to roll. Straight forward. Okay, let's start our meeting with the Pledge of the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Welcome everybody to our second meeting of the month for the Village Board. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Um, can we get a motion to approve the Village Board meeting minutes from October 1st, 2020? Show me Andy? I'll second it. Second, Shep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, nobody looking to get citizens' comments? Uh, and if you're talking to anybody and they say, oh, gee, I would like to say something during the meeting, they can. I mean, we can get them hooked up. We had the gal from the Mexican restaurant and gave her a chance to talk. And if there's ever a resident that has a question for us, they certainly can address us here or they can address us off the air and uh, we'll listen. Uh, next up, our annual appointments. Hopefully you all got copies of that. Um, this used to be a quite a labor intensive section of the meeting, but we've uh, broken it up into four pages. And what I would ask you to do is we'll get a motion to consider approving page one Everybody just look down through it and make sure there's the village board meet just so that there's nothing, you know, egregious uh, that we have the wrong, somebody who has retired is now listed as a board member or something. Um, and then we'll approve it and then we'll go to the second page and we'll get through all four pages and it should be pretty quick. Um, so if, um, if I could get a motion to approve page one of the annual meeting minutes, Appointments? Moved. Yeah, okay. Megan and Andy. Um, and now if you definitely take a look, see if you have any questions. And you're all ready, just give me a wave or something and we'll vote. Andy's all set, Megan's all set, Ruth, Bruce, Mark. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the first page of the annual appointments. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Let's go to page two. And I get a motion to approve page two. Move. Ruth Seco, Mike Shepard second. Please read through just to see if anybody has any questions. Everybody set? Wave. I wanted, I wanted to know why uh, Andy is in the general committee. He's got a much higher rank than I do. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I want to approve that one. You already did. You already voted on that one. Oh, we have a separate, different page layout here. I must have the earlier version. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Most separated because some people need strict yeah, I, guidance. I didn't print it out again. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this one starts with the appointment of Matthew Fox to the ZBA, reappointment. Um, Annie's the first one. Huh? What was the first one we voted on? The first page was all the deputy mayor, acting justice, clerks, different committees. Because I have the same version that Mark has, apparently. Okay, yeah. so that... I sent another one out. <laughs> so the second page starts with... Matthew Fox. Everything before that was already approved. So For the record, right? I'm, only, I'm only kidding about Andy's point. I know. <laughs> but, but, he, but he deserves it. <laughs> I could have put him down as a private committee, but that didn't look, that didn't look so good, right? <laughs> All right. If everybody had a chance to look at page two, which ends with WSYR radio being the official radio news media for the village. All right. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. All right. Page three um, starts out with all the dates for the meetings and finishes with charge for work performed outside the village by our Department of Public Works, what the fees per hour are. 
So if I could get a motion to accept the third page of the annual appointments. Move. Uh, Andy, can I get a second? Ruth Seco with a second. All right, there was one change that I just see. It's June 18th, 2020 instead of June 20th, 2019. Oh, you snuck in a 2019 on us. Yes, I did. I didn't notice it. Because I was looking through to see if there were any meetings that I thought would be, we might have to move um, or whatever. I oh, see we have half of them have gone past already, yeah. right? What's that? We're, we're, oh, already, the list already. we're already halfway through the list. Right. Yes. Hang in there. We'll send right. another revised copy. It gets better. All right. We've got a motion in a second. All in favor of approving page three? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And then page four is starts with the certificate certificate of compliance and disclosure and finishes up with the little piece i have to read so be it resolved and that's the end of the fourth page so if i could get a motion to approve page four moved Shep, second megan okay make sure you read through it I only, how much of it do I have to read, Mo? Just the, all the stuff that's in boldface or just the therefore be it resolved? Hmm? I, I mean, that's just as important as the other things. I don't think you have to read it. Okay. I, it's just bold because. Okay. I don't know. All right, because I, I learned right in the beginning to not say. Yes. I say severely. And I surprised Bruce the first time I got it right. He thought I was going to mess that up. Okay, if everybody's had a chance to read the fourth page, could I get a motion or a vote to accept the fourth page? All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Opposed? Carried. Look at that. We've taken a painful thing and made it not painful. Thank you, Mo, for your help. Um, trustees comments and I'll go in the order that I see people. Shep? All set. The agenda's good. Okay. Megan? Just the agenda. Ruth? Agenda, thank you. Andy? All set. Just the agenda. Bruce? Well, I'm looking at the agenda and it'd be hard to object to it. So I'll stick to the agenda. Thank you, Bruce. Mark? I'll stick to the agenda as well. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. We have, is that everybody? What's it? Yeah, okay. Um, mayor's comments. Um, I don't know if, how many of you might have noticed it, but Social Security money will be increased by 1.3%. Cost of living has gone up. And of course, the, the cost, the additional cost of Medicare will take care of the increase in the cost of living. Uh, but nice when we get an increase. Um, the Chamber of Commerce put out a, a very well thought out um, little item to support local businesses in, in a tough time under the heading of Beville Strong. And uh, just, you know, things like being patient, um, donate to local organizations online if you have to, uh, be kind business owners and the staff didn't request to be in the middle of a pandemic. They're trying to make it. And it, it, if you read through it, it's, it's a lot of very common sense stuff. It's probably stuff that most of our mothers tried to teach us when we were younger about getting along with people and, and treating people the way we want to be treated. And, uh, but I thought it was nice that they sent it out and I put it on our uh, Facebook page for people to read and, uh, if you get a chance, you might want to just look through and if you see uh, our chamber person, you can let her know what a nice job she did. Um, our November 15th meeting, WEP is going to be here. Um, whether we're going to be have to come in and do it live to meet with them in the meeting room or whether we can get them on the Zoom, I don't know. 
but it's going to be an update on what's going on with the county plan to take over the sewers for the whole county. Um, it's not if they do it, it's more when they do it. Um, they're having a lot more problems in other parts of the county. So I don't know if they have changed their strategy. Uh, they were going to try to get that eastern, southeastern part of the county upgraded. DeWitt, Pompeii, oh, all that area over there is, is a nightmare. Uh, our sewer system is pristine compared to other, several other parts of the county. So it'll be interesting to see where that takes us, um, what the time frame is, and so on. So um, I don't want to steal any of Ruth's thunder, but there is a lot of progress has been made over at the senior center as far as the physical building. Uh, I went over today. I know Andy went over um, as part of the general committee yesterday to check the floor to see if they did it, you know, if it was significantly better than what it was before. Um, Andy and I agreed, I think Ruth agreed too, that it's, it may not be 100% absolute, absolutely perfect, but it's way better than it was. And I think it's good enough that we can live with it. The door I saw is up. Um, so the building now will be available. Uh, like today, I think, I think one of the groups met outdoors, but if it, tomorrow, if it's a nasty day and there's a group meeting, they could come indoors and, and Ruth has got the plan in place to spread them out and masks on and all that kind of stuff to keep them safe, but at least they can continue to have some of their activities. So um, I did get a nice email the other day from a, a lady who I assume attends the senior center and very thankful for the support of the two towns in supporting the senior center, supporting, you know, supportive of what the village does with the senior center and also yeah. very complimentary of Ruth and the staff for trying to uh, provide service at a time when it was hard to get service. Um, having activities be outdoors, um, having Nancy uh, call everybody on the list. Um, we've been doing now for a couple of weeks, the uh, down memory lane where some of the seniors do this with us, my wife and I, and, and some of the seniors and, and Ruth was on the first week and, and two of the seniors um, unsolicited just said, really appreciated the fact that we got a call from Nancy at the center who just basically said, are you okay? Do you need anything? We're here if you need us. And if you can imagine if you're a senior living by yourself and not knowing for sure how you're gonna get through all this, to have somebody call you up and say, we're here. If you need anybody, you just call us and we'll help you get food, we'll help you get to the doctors, whatever you need. And uh, that's exactly what we would hope our senior center do, would do, but I don't know that very many other senior centers in the area were doing that kind of stuff. So to Ruth and to all the staff, uh, hats off. Um, and, and I'll throw in Meals on Wheels because they continued clicking right through the whole thing. Um, flu shots are, being, are available now and all the experts are really suggesting that, you know, if you are the type that normally gets a flu shot, don't not get it this year. Uh, the, more than ever, um, you want to be protected so that perhaps if you get symptoms in the middle of the winter, you won't pass it off as the flu and find out that it's COVID. Um, so most of the pharmacies will, will give you a shot at the pharmacy. Um, if you're older and have Medicare, Medicare covers the flu shots. Um, so I know Ryan McMahon repeated it again today on his session. Please get a flu shot so we don't get two pandemics going at the same time. Um, we are trying, and again, I'm not, not trying to steal from Chuck's Thunder, but I just wanted to make sure that we mentioned that we are going to try to get some sidewalks done. Um, it's late. Um, the sidewalk guy was super busy and he got started late, I think, at, but he has said he will, you know, give him a list and he'll try to get at least some of the sidewalks done. Um, the chief and Megan kind of co-authored a Halloween scenario on safe ways to enjoy Halloween. It's on our Facebook page. I think it's also on our website. Uh, suggestions if you're a homeowner that would be giving out candy, 
suggestions if you're a parent that would be having your kids trick-or-treating on the ways to do it safe. Give it a read. Uh, it's not rocket science. It's a lot of common sense, but it's put down in one place for you to read. Um, I would take a look at it. Um, well, I'm going to remind Greg to, when it's his turn to talk, to, to talk about political signs if you hadn't already had plans to do that. And I am going to schedule an executive session, um, which will be item A on new business. And it's for personnel um, issues. And uh, that's all I have. So now we'll go around the department heads and we'll start with our attorney, Bob. And I'll stick with the agenda, Mayor. Okay. Codes officer, Greg. You're muted. You're, you're on mute, Greg. All right. Sorry about that. I, I did want to talk about the signs tonight. Um, we've had a few that have had to be removed. Um, it is election season, so we're going to see a lot more temporary signs. Um, I just want to remind residents that uh, they need to be at least 10 feet off of the roadway outside the village right of way. They also cannot be placed on any public property. They need to be placed on private property with permission to the property owner. And we have had some oversized signs that have had to be removed. Uh, you're limited to 16 square feet per side on uh, temporary signs. And that's not just election signs, that's any temporary signs that go up. Um, I'll be out there looking for them, you know, as I always am. So I'll be either moving them or uh, sending notice to the uh, property owners to take care of them. Very good. I know that so that people know that you're not a curmudgeon, that if you see signs on our side of the sidewalk, you typically get out and move them to the other side of the sidewalk so they're on the private property. And right. uh, I hope people appreciate the fact that you don't just take the signs and throw them in the back of your car and make them come looking for them. Yeah, I don't have any use for the signs. Right. <laughs> no. And I did see that a couple of the oversized signs were gone. So Yes. So, and they come down what, day after election day, they should be gone? They should be gone at least uh, up to three days mm -hmm. after election day, they need to be gone. Very good. And don't touch other people's signs. Right. Anything else? Uh, busy in the codes office. Uh, yesterday, I wrote up three more permits. People are still doing uh, fences, decks, little additions. Um, it's been a busy summer for a lot of people uh, since we aren't able to travel. A lot of people have been doing work on their properties, and it's uh, it's really nice to see that people are you know investing in their properties. Yep. Good. Very good. That's what we like to hear. Okay, we will move on to the village clerk. Mo. I just wanted to mention that we're going to any outside the village custom water customers, like the ones in town of Lysander and Maple Road that we service, any outstanding water balances as of October 25th will be uh, levied to your town taxes. So you still have time to pay on those. Um, for village residents, you have until November 25th. Also, village taxes, uh, we're still collecting until the 31st of October, then they'll turn, be turned over to the county until the 15th of November. And then at that point, if they're not paid, they uh, will be added to your village property taxes. Uh, otherwise, business as usual. There you go. I, I mentioned yesterday on the live session with Shelly Hoffman that your description was you're just chugging along. Mm -hmm. So, very good. Okay, we'll move on to Treasurer Anna. Okay, well, I'm still chugging along too, but um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting there. I truly am. Um, I, sh I should have final figures for you guys really soon. Um, I just want to let you know that we did, uh, we have received some CHIPS money. 
Um, we did not receive, I haven't had a chance to talk to Louise yet, uh, but we did not receive exactly what we've requested. We're like 27,000 short. So I don't know. Usually uh, it matches what we send in for. So I'm not sure if anyone knows something I don't. Well, the governor, but, has, um, the governor has threatened 20% yep, less money. That would about be know, it. So that might be just about 20%. Yeah, that, that would just about do it. Yep. Um, okay. And the other thing is I have, um, where am I? I have some money and I started investigating it uh, the other day and I still haven't figured it out. So I've got to make a phone call, but we have $45,525 that I do not know what it is. Came in on the 2nd of October. It's not showing up on my vendor list to tell me where, what it is from like my dog County or anything. Um, so I'm going to have to make some phone calls unless somebody knows what it is. Um, we received some a little while ago and it was save the rain grant money, but Mo, do you know of anything? I haven't had a chance to even ask you. No, I, I will check. I will check my spreadsheet tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. I look at mine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a good thing. We have money. I just got to figure out who gets it or who, who it gets credited to. So, um, yeah. other than that, that, that's all I have right now. Okay. Thanks, Anna. Yep. I'll uh, move on to the senior center. Ruth? Well, just um, about the floor, thank you, Mayor and Trustee Dryden, for your part of making sure that got done. But also want to thank Louise and Chuck for making sure that people came back to finish the job on all that. So um, thanks to the DPW for that. Also, with flu shots, you mentioned, uh, we do have another drive-up flu shot clinic on Wednesday the 21st, 930 to 1030. This one is brought to you by Walgreens. Bring your cards, your insurance cards, wear a mask, stay in your vehicle, the pharmacist will come up to you. Uh, the previous one we did went very smoothly. So if you're someone that wants to have, you know, minimal contact and get, the, get your necessary flu shot, please take advantage of this. So Wednesday, 21st at 9.30. And that Wednesday is also Food Sense Pickup Day. So if you ordered Food Sense this month, Wednesday the 21st is the pickup day for that. 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., drive around to the back of the building and we'll take care of you from there. Um, so that's for October. And then one more, uh, the seniors, we have a drive up Halloween event planned for you on Friday the 30th at 2 p.m. So just as we've done some other giveaway ice cream and that kind of thing, um, it's a Halloween event. Wear a costume and your name will go into a, a, a drawing for a prize. So come on by on the 30th at 2 p.m. for that. And I think that's it, unless anybody has any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Uh, Public Works, Chuck. Um, you spoke briefly about the sidewalk uh, program. I did speak with a contractor and he was looking for, uh, he said, depending on how the, how the season goes, if it stays um, decent, he may be able to get some of that in this year. Um, Bruce had asked for some different measurements and stuff and uh, luckily, Greg was able to help us out with that. I just, I, I didn't have time to get out and do it. And then uh, Greg's been working with us with that and he's identified most all the properties and uh, that's, that's been a big help, help to us. Um, you'll see the villages, there are tree guys going around cutting trees. So mm -hmm. some of them are gonna block streets and what have you when they're doing that, but he's starting to do that now. Uh, the flowers are all out of the four corners now. The only thing we have left is the benches and the in the garbage can, but we usually leave them out till after the window painting. Uh, brush is right in full season now. So we're right on brush most every day now. Uh, we're, the water's still doing hydrant flushings. Um, people in Candlewick may know that. Uh, we were up there yesterday and we had three water breaks. So there was quite a few people up there that, that uh, didn't have some water for a few hours, but we got after them, got them all fixed yesterday. And we do realize there's three or four driveways that got flushed out and we're gonna to have to do some repair on that. We're gonna to try to get that done at the beginning of the week if we can. Uh, we believe we have a Christmas tree and uh, picked out. Um, I wanna call, call the crane operator, make sure he can get in there and get that. So that's been taken care of. Uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's, uh, unless you have any questions, we're good to go. Anybody have any questions for Chuck? 
he, he's been busy. When Chuck said his description yesterday was, well, it's funny, I come into work and the next thing you know, it's three o'clock. <laughs> I don't know where the day went. So uh, that was nine. That was nine thirty yesterday. <laughs> so we like to hear that because obviously we're getting a lot of work done. And uh, I know the people in the, you know, in our neighborhood who were without water were, were pleased that it was fairly quick that it was restored. And so as usual, uh, you know, you guys are way ahead of the curve and, uh, they were they were they were really upset. They were really good uh, yesterday. Normally we get a lot more phone calls and people come up to us and they're really upset. And those people up there were fantastic. I don't think anybody really gave us a hard time. Oh, that's nice. Which was nice. Yeah. Kind of goes along with what I said of the uh, the chamber for the restaurants. I mean, we didn't set out to have broken water pipes. Uh, you know that was not something not on our schedule. And so uh, I appreciate people being patient with us. All right, thanks, Chuck. Uh, just uh, one comment, Mr. Mayor, about the hydrant flushing. I'm sure everybody would agree we'd rather find the, uh, the weaknesses in the water mains uh, under this program now uh, as opposed to when we might actually need the water under some type of a fire situation. So everybody's patience on that end of it is greatly appreciated. Yeah, and that's what I said to Chuck. It's a lot better to... A lot better to make sure the hydrants are working now than trying to figure out in the middle of January when there's a fire if they're going to work or not. Uh, and, you know, there's no guarantee, obviously, but at least we've done our part. We've done everything we can do to make sure they're ready. And uh, I sleep better at night knowing that our people are, are better taken care of. So appreciate it, Chuck. Send it on to the guys. We appreciate all the work they do. I'll do that. Thank you. Uh, police, Michael. Uh, good evening, Mayor and uh, members of the board. Uh, obviously, uh, since our last meeting, there's been uh, uh, some, some activity here in the village that uh, we've dealt with. Uh, our officers uh, responded uh, over to Stonewood uh, Drive uh, there uh, um, last week. Uh, the sheriff's office is uh, assisting in that investigation. And uh, uh, Sheriff Conway and I did a press briefing at night at scene. And uh, we're awaiting uh, results uh, from the medical examiner's office. Uh, which we uh, hope will be forthcoming soon. And then we can, uh, uh, I'm sure the sheriffs will be releasing more information there. They've been uh, excellent to work with and uh, I've been in uh, contact with uh, uh, both Mayor Clark and uh, Public Safety Chairperson Shepard uh, uh, from that night forward regarding that incident. Um, we've also had, unfortunately, uh, a couple other uh, uh, death investigations uh, that we're dealing with uh, that we're waiting on um, uh, on these separate incidents, we're waiting on some toxicology reports, uh, possible uh, drug overdose situations. So uh, we're working those investigations also. So it's been uh, it's been a busy uh, uh, period of time for us at the at the department. And uh, on a more positive note, um, if you come into the back parking lot of the police department, you'll notice that we've got some signage now uh, put up at our back door. Um, and uh, it goes well with the, uh, the intercom system with our, with our doorbell that we have that our clerical staff can, can see and speak directly to individuals at the back parking lot. I think it's going to provide uh, better, better service to our customers, uh, especially now that the state put up the signage, directing them to turn into the parking lot. And so when individuals pull into our back lot, they don't have to walk around to the front of the building now. So I think that'll be a, a better, more beneficial thing. And then, uh, as you alluded to, Mayor, obviously with uh, uh, Halloween, I uh, appreciate uh, Trustee O'Donnell uh, getting the ball rolling with, with her thoughts. Then I uh, added some of my own to, to that, uh, that particular uh, message to the community on, on Halloween. Right now, as it stands, uh, uh, Halloween is, is moving forward. And uh, uh, obviously, we'll have patrols out that night. We would ask uh, for those folks that maybe used to congregating groups amongst your neighbors and, and have parties and, and, and trick or treat all together. We'd ask you not to do that this year. Please uh, do everything you can to ensure uh, your safety, your children's safety and, and, and those folks in the community. And uh, we would appreciate that uh, as well. And uh, we, we did have contact uh, recently with the, uh, the Kiwanis uh, Club, obviously who puts on uh, the Turkey Day uh, trot and they've indicated that the race is going to go uh, virtual this year. So uh, we were not uh, uh, planning, uh, obviously, for Thanksgiving Day to, 
to have uh, you know 2,500 people in the village. Um, so that'll be something uh, virtual uh, for for this year. I don't know if they fully announced that yet, but uh, but they did let us know that because we were trying to ensure that uh, uh, what their plans were. Uh, that's all I have, Mayor, unless there's questions. I got a stupid question. What's the is it October 15th or November 15th for the off street parking? What day is that? Is that next month or this month? Uh, it's November. November. Okay. Yeah, got, got one request for that on, uh, on our Facebook page uh, yesterday, wanting to know what the day was that the last day you could park on the street. So. Uh, I'll, then uh, we'll, I will, uh, we'll get a message out in the next, uh, next week or so, put it on uh, the village's page and the, and the police department's page to uh, start spreading that message a little bit. And then I believe Trustee O'Donnell had a comment too, Mayor. I do. Okay. I just had a question on the, the intercom in the back door now. If when your communications um, staff is not in the office, does that, the, if someone comes to the back door, does it get routed to the officers who may be out on the street or? No, it's an, it's an internal uh, uh, intercom system, but we did put up some new signage uh, along with the, the sign above our door that says Balls of Police. We put up new signage uh, advising individuals during our administrative office hours, and we articulate what those are, to, to ring the doorbell. And then if somebody shows up after those hours uh, to call 911, and then an officer will be dispatched right to their location uh, to, to provide service to them. So we, we, uh, we tried to take that into consideration with our new signage. Thank you. Certainly. Good point. That was a good, that was, I'm sure that would be a question other people would have asked. I, I didn't think of it. Good job, Meg. Yeah, well, we did have the, the, uh, the intercom uh, previously, Mayor, at the, at the front door that you could push that would connect you to 911. Unfortunately, the connectivity wasn't the best there. Traffic going by, oftentimes 911, would report it to us as a 911 hang up when we knew it wasn't, we knew it was someone there that, that required some assistance. So now uh, almost everyone has a cell phone and we just direct the people to, to simply call 911 and uh, our officers will be able to respond back to the police department in short order to, uh, to help out whoever might be there. Very good. Okay. Anybody got anything else? Do you right. know if the ghost walk thing is that going to continue to be going on this year? I, I personally am not sure if it's occurring. I, I believe it might. I'm not sure, though. Um, and if it is, I'd certainly want to have some conversations with, with those organizers to ensure that uh, uh, all uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, guidelines were going to be followed. So that I'm not certain of. I usually, I usually um, volunteer for that event and I haven't been contacted about volunteering so well I have so oh I'm you have yeah. <laughs> who puts that on the Center for the Arts the Baldensville Center for the oh, Arts okay. Jim, uh, Dale Jim Dale sent me a text message asking me if I would be willing to guide oh maybe he doesn't well, want me anymore I would <laughs> I think you should respond to him, Bruce, and say, make sure he checks with the police chief first before they get too deep in their plans to make sure it's, you know, doable. I, I don't know how, long, how large, yeah, if, if Bruce, if you could just have him uh, reach out to me just so I can touch base with him to, uh, so if I get asked a question just like I did, uh, we can at least ensure that uh, I've had some conversation with him and uh, whatever their plans are uh, meet the state standards. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Thanks, everybody. Um, I have no pending business. Um, and our only new business is to go to executive session. Do we have anything to discuss? Anything else that needs to be brought up uh, before we go into executive session? Again, I, I, I applaud everybody here who's had anything to do with making um, the village runs smoothly through a, a tough time. Um, I, I think we should be very proud of the efforts that that our public works, that our police department, that our clerical staffs, um, codes, uh, courts, everybody has has uh, been amazing. 
and uh, we continue to to go along, chug along, as Mo would say, just chugging right along. And and I know that there has been some hiccups and bumps along the way, but um, I I've, I'm going to tell you right now, I have not had one call of complaint from anybody that they couldn't get a somebody to come out and look at a leak, come come out and answer a police call, um, a codes question, you know, a village clerk type of question that everything is, I mean, the senior center, every, everybody has been there. And I hope that our, our people who, who pay taxes and live in our village appreciate that. Um, Cause it, I, I don't think that happens everywhere. So um, hats off to everybody. Um, and with if all that I, being, hmm? before you close the meeting, can I give an update on my question about the Halloween thing? Um, the, email, the text I got said the dates were October 4th, 5th, and 6th. So I'm assuming they decided not to go forward with it. <laughs> oh. Well, well so we did, we didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> we missed it. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn to executive session for personnel issues? Um, and the only one... At, well, we lost somebody right away. Andy's made a motion. Can I get a second? second. Megan? Um, and there's no plan, no, no action will be taken. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. See you uh, November 1st, the rest of you.